Go screw attack yourself, pal. Let's play a game, shall we? Hey, everybody! Welcome to Metroid Samus Returns! I just couldn't help myself. I just had to play it. Oh, look at that. So far, so good. Ooh, look at this. What are the settings, huh? Controls? Yeah, that's something. Okay, uh... May as well start a new game. I didn't go that far anyway. I was just testing things out. Current data will be erased. I don't care. I didn't have much to lose anyway. In the year 20X5 of the Cosmic Calendar, a Galactic Federation research team discovered an unknown life form on planet SR388. While they were able to successfully obtain a living sample, the research vessel was attacked by space pirates during their voyage home. This attack was no coincidence. The space pirates had set their sights on these mysterious organisms called Metroids. They planned to replicate the sample and exploit its ability to absorb the energy of any life form. Their intention was to use Metroids as a weapon, one powerful enough to conquer the entire galaxy. To combat this threat, the Galactic Federation dispatched a lone bounty hunter to infiltrate the space pirate base on the planet Zeppus. Against all odds, Samus Aran eradicated the Metroids on Zebus and defeated Mother Brain, the leader of the Space Pirates, and so their sinister plans were thwarted for a time. Concerned by those developments, by these developments and the great threat the Metroid species still pose to the galaxy, the Galactic Federation mounted another expedition to SR388. A special squadron of elite soldiers from the Galactic Federation Police was dispatched to investigate. The team soon went missing, but not before transmitting a small sampling of data back to headquarters. Analysis of this data confirmed a Metroid presence within the interior of Planet S388. As long as they continued to exist, these Metroids would forever pose a devastating threat to the galaxy! The resulting decision of the Galactic Federation Council was immediate and unanimous! Samus Aran, you must exterminate the Metroids once and for all. And thus, our story begins. Tun tun tun. This is where things get spicy. It only seems to have brief periods of lag when it's loading, but surprisingly, once everything's all set up, it runs really well. I was actually shocked. Very nice shot you got there. Reminds me of Metroid Prime when you first go down on the planet. Which is basically the same cutscene anyway. It's definitely a lot like the intro to Metroid Prime 2. Only without the ship getting zapped by a storm part. And now our story begins. You can do it, Samus Aran! Eradicate the Metroids! And bring peace to the galaxy once more! Or something. There's certainly Chozo ruins all over the place, but what do you expect? This is going into the Chosen homeworld. They did create it, after all. Right, there we go. Maybe I'm jumping the gun a bit. Hello. Hello to you too, you prick. Indeedy. Oh, maybe I should have assigned it to that. Well, you, you told me, but I already figured that out. Sorry. That looked like it would be destructible, my bad. Take this. Hello, you little freak. Would you like to die for me? It seems the game isn't nearly so stable when I'm recording. But oh well, I'll have to deal with it. It seems to just slow the game down, so I think I should still be good to play. Ah, there we go. It can be a little tricky <laughs> to actually aim on this. But uh, I'll get the hang of it. Probably. Hello, you little freak. You want some of this, huh? You want some of this? Oh, I love how it turned around as if to say, Yeah, I want me some of that! Too bad. Yeah, you're supposed to you're supposed to be able to counter them if you do it specifically, right? 
Well, maybe I should quit making an idiot out of myself, because when I was doing a test recording, I was doing much better than this. I'm already at low energy, aren't I? Well, this is getting embarrassing. Indeed. I guess I have no choice but to use that melee counter. I didn't want to at first. It wasn't something I particularly wanted to do because when I heard about it, I was I thought it would it seemed like unnecessary fluff. But you know, it actually feels pretty good to use. Oh, uh, about to say. Yeah, that was a close one. I thought it was gonna crash for a minute there. Good thing it didn't. Whoops. I got all the reflexes of a dead cat. <laughs> and that time it didn't even do me any good. Hello. Well, that time it did. You're pretty much encouraged to just wait there for them to attack. And then counterattack. It's not really proactive, is it? You're far better off just waiting for them to attack. And it even points it right at it. That's a, that's a shame, but... I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world. You still have to have some timing. It's not like... It's not like it's a, a, a press button to win kind of situation here. Damn it. And look at that. It actually stuns them. See? That shows what happens if... You don't do it on time. I'm just demonstrating. See? It was just a demonstration. Don't worry about it. And now I'm gonna play for real. At some point, obviously. Probably. Maybe one of these days I'll actually play for, for real. I'll take this, you prick. Well, okay then. I'm glad that was a thing. Okay, cool. I'm glad you restored my ammo. Thank you. Wow. I'm called the Metroid Junkie, and I've been neglecting to use missiles. It's it's coming back to me now. now if I can, if I hold the controller like this, it's definitely a lot easier to pull off. You guys can't really see what I'm talking about, but just take my word for it. I did something that makes controlling it me easier. Oh, look at that. Open sesame, eh? Ah, oh, what do you know? Yeah, it's almost as if it's an upgrade. Morph ball acquired! Good for you, Samus. The compact morph ball lets you move through narrow passages. Simply press down while crouching or tap the map on the touch screen to take on morph ball mode. I'm probably not going to be doing the latter because it's a lot easier to just use the buttons on this controller. Oh boy. Welp. Hey, why don't you come this way, huh? There you go. Why don't you come after me, huh? There you go. Thank you, friend. I'm so glad you willfully made yourself vulnerable for me. Yeah, oh, you're so nice, aren't you? Sure, save my progress. Why not? Save complete. Hello. Yeah, you have to have good timing on this. Come on. But it, it does make it more manageable. The game seems to be centered around it. It's not like previous Metroid game. I, I, here I thought that you could get away with not doing it, but it seems like the game is interwoven into it. Thus that if you don't use it, you're going to have a really hard time. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's more than possible to do without, but it seems like the game is built around it with it in mind. Unlike previous Metroid games. I see they changed it from lava to purple ooze. Which is weird. There you go. 
Well, I, I didn't get the special cutscene one, but I did stun it. What the? Okay, that, that door just does not have any energy to it, does it? Okay, let me see those parkour skills, huh? Well, that was something, wasn't it? Why don't you quit teasing me, huh? Oh, crap. There are dead soldiers around. Sucks for them, doesn't it? Well, what do we have here? What the heck is that? Is that an energy expansion? Well, I'll find out, won't I? Cool. Scan pulse. Oh, right. That's basically the equivalent of the X-Ray on Super Metroid. Except you get it way sooner. Upgrading suit for... Aeon compatibility. Aeon fuels special abilities like the scan pulse. Reveal your gauge with the Aeon orbs foes may drop whenever you beat them or successfully parry. Cool. Scan the area. Use it to reveal map information and the location of breakable blocks. I don't think I'm gonna use this. Because this seems a little cheaty. I can do the things the old-fashioned way on this one. You know, just shooting everywhere until you eventually get it. Oh, okay. That one wasn't even necessary. Ooh, I love them. I love the remix there. That's really nice. I mean, I, I really can't compare it to AM2R because they're two different things, but... You know, this, this, this has its own flair, too. It's clearly more interested in visual, in being, having a presentation than anything else. I hate to say it, but AM2R did, a, did better at feeling like a Metroid game, but this... Wow, what is with the freaking wall jump all of a sudden? Was I just not doing it right or something? Crap. There you go. Wow. I'm being bad at this, aren't I? Ooh. Missile tank acquired. Missile capacity increased by three. Awesome. So that's all it was, huh? Just an upgrade. So this was an optional area. No wonder it had that wall jump in it. And it did seem a little advanced for a mandatory section, even, even for GBA Metroid standards. Ah, uh, here it comes. Yep, it's a Metroid. Indeed. The Amiibo option has been unlocked in the map menu. Well, it's not like I've got an Amiibo to test it with, so uh, I'll just have to take your word for it. What's this? Hello, what's all this then? Let me guess, it's for your health, right? Yep. Energy fully restored. Oh, this is lovely, isn't it? Although one other thing that AM2R is going to have the advantage in is that it didn't copyright flat. It it doesn't have copyright. I mean, I, I get it, but you know, even so, even so. I think I was trying to say, before I got a little frustrated, and I really need to time this better. There we go, okay. What I was going to say is that one thing this definitely has the edge over in AM2R, well, it's obvious because it had a, a much higher budget, is that obviously the graphics, the audio, just the overall presentation is worlds above AM2R. AM2R looks really beautiful too, don't get me wrong. It uses some visual flair to touch up the 16-bit graphics, but arguably, this just looks better. What the? What the? Oh, okay. It was a missile one. Yep. This is where I get to face an Alpha Metroid. <laughs> Should be fun, right? Let's see if it's as hard as AM2R's. Because the AM2R actually had pretty clever versions of Metroids. 
I'll take this. Take this. Well, oh, okay. I get it. So this isn't exactly like Metroid 2 either. It has its own challenges too. Except this is more about timing. You're heavily encouraged to... You're heavily encouraged to use those melee counters for the most part. But you have to have good timing to use it. Well, that was fun. You acquired Metroid DNA! I mean, I, I guess it's kind of, it kind of works. I mean, to be fair, the original way that AM2... That the original way that Metro 2 did it is that it would just randomly have lava go down, and I think AM2R tried to come up with a, its own explanation for it. Whereas this one decided, yeah, screw that, we're just gonna make it something else entirely. And I'm I'm not I'm obviously not ditching I'm not dissing on that obviously that in a way that that's good because it kind of makes it make more sense. It's not entirely faithful to what originally happened, but. I mean, it makes more sense if if you go with it from the perspective that the Chozo intended for the Metroids to be killed because they were too exploitable. I guess Chozos realized that the Metroids would have to be eliminated eventually because of their potential to get into the wrong hands or something. That's my guess. That would be my best guess as to why this system even exists. I'm not sure if there's going to be an explanation for that later on in the game, but I will admit that is a little questionable why the Chozo would have a system for killing their own creation. I guess just in case they went rogue or something. Maybe you were meant to have Chozo DNA to go further, and this is basically just... Actually, then again, Samus has Chozo DNA already, but, you know... Come on, you prick. Damn it. I keep doing it wrong. There we go. It's It actually feels... I will admit, it, fe it does feel really good once you actually nail it. It doesn't exactly feel cheaped out. That's one concern that I had, because when people were describing it like that, it made me think that the game was going to go gonna go cheap out, cheap out on the difficulty and just make that your easy win. But thankfully that doesn't appear to be the case. It actually does seem like you actually have to try to hit them. Oh, for crying out loud. You do actually have to have good timing to hit them, which is not trivial by any means, trust me. I'm, I'm trying it right now and I'm realizing it's not a, a win, it's not something that will win the game for you. So I will give Nintendo credit. It's not just a cheap way to win. It's just a different way of playing it. You really have to actually play it to understand. How come... For some reason the wall jumps are not as good. They're not as fluid as I would expect them to be. I'm going right into the wall and yet it won't let me wall jump. It's weird. Okay, it worked that time. How come it's not working this time? I just don't get it. Some parts of this game are quite good, and other, t other parts of the game just confuse and infuriate me. Actually, are you supposed to use a missile on that? I didn't even check. I was too distracted with dealing with those enemies. Wait, what the hell am I doing? My bad. Oh, okay. So there's no way to shoot through it, huh? I really do have to go back this way. Well, this is going to be a pain, isn't it? Pain in the pain in the arse. Why isn't this working? This doesn't make any sense. Was I supposed to keep going forward? I'm sorry, I thought I had to backtrack to get back there. Clearly I was wrong. I guess I shouldn't have assumed. Let me guess, there's a shortcut right here, isn't there? There's a shortcut that's going to take me back instantly that I neglected. I'm sorry I didn't make that assumption. I figured you had to go back, and that that would let you get further. Oh, charge beam, huh? 
I guess <laughs> that was my bad. I will fully admit when things are my bad. I'm not really the, the biggest fan of Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. And I will admit that sometimes the mechanics just straight up frustrate me to an extent. But here, I really have no excuse. This, this really is my fault. I mean, this, this game isn't as hard as Curse of the Moon. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not a pushover, but especially if I'm distracted, you just have to time it right. I guess that is ultimately what Curse of the Moon is about, pattern recognition, but I don't know why. For some reason with that, it's it's just different. I don't I don't get what it is. I don't get why why I get so frustrated with Curse of the Moon, yet I'll play something like this that also requires pattern recognition and be perfectly fine. Maybe it's because Maybe it's because it's a more a, pr a, a more modern aesthetic, a more modern it feels more modern mechanically, so it feels less of frustration. I mean for some reason the nest styled mechanics just frustrate me with how much more stiff they appear to be. I probably shouldn't call the game unfair. I, I know I sometimes call the game unfair. It isn't really unfair, it's just... Yeah, I don't know. It's just not for me. It just doesn't feel good to me, specifically. I don't know why the game is actually running slower when I'm recording it. Because seriously, when, when I tested it by itself, it was pretty much perfect, flawless 30 frames per second. And now it's... I don't know, it's it's fluctuating between 27 and the, the like. Maybe I shouldn't be recording it at 60 frames per second. Maybe that's why. Maybe I should have been recording it at 30. Oh well, it's a little too late for that now, isn't it? Wouldn't do me much good now anyway, would it? Yeah, that's right. Just shove your... Shove your cylinder into the hole and everything will be fine. Cool. That you have acquired one Metroid DNA, you may pass. Maybe Metroid DNA is just their currency. Well, if you want to get past this toll booth, that's going to cost one Metroid DNA. If you want to get to the, the really luxurious neighborhood now, that's going to cost you like ten. Okay, whatever. I don't really care anyway. I love how it requires you to have the charge beam. Almost as if it somehow expects you to be able to get here but before you kill that Metroid. Even though the game does everything possible to prevent you. Is that to prevent, prevent sequence breakers? Come on, Nintendo. Why you gotta do that, huh? What the heck is that? Oh, it's an elevator, isn't it? It's an elevator, isn't it? Well, that was not... That was unintentional. My bad. Hey, screw you! Screw you, you little freak. Whatever, I'll just wait for it to disappear, I guess. Oh, crap. Well, I killed it. Huh, that's interesting. You actually pick things up in a manner that's pretty similar to Doom 2016. That's pretty cool. All right, here we go. Take that, you little freak. What do you say to that, huh? Cool. Okay, now it's an, that, that's an elevator. My bad. I don't know the difference between an elevator and just some old thing that doesn't even work anymore. Okay, now it's going pretty choppily, actually. It's because it always it's always choppy when it first loads something in. Unfortunately, I guess that expands the entire length of that elevator ride. Bafflingly. Oh, crap. Oh, I could have handled that better. There you go. Take that. Damn it. Well, whatever, take that. I'm not gonna play with you all day. I could, but I won't. We both got places to be, Rockman. 
So, screw you. I'm going here. Give me some of that good morph ball action. What does that do? Oh, okay. Right, it's another safe, safe room. Fair enough. I'll admit it's pretty fun so far. I mean, yeah, sometimes it seems like it's inconsistent with things. Especially with that wall jump for some reason. But, in other, in other aspects, it's actually better than I thought. So, so far, pretty good. Definitely a lot better than Metroid Other M and Federation Force. Actually, I've never actually... I've never really played Federation Force. Maybe I should give it a try. You know, before completely dismissing it out of hand. Crap. Well, it does take a pretty pretty long recharge time to actually do that, so... If you do it out of sync, you, you're probably not going to do it. You're probably not going to be able to beat it before it attacks you, so... Make sure you get it right the first time. Don't be an idiot like me. Actually, pay attention for crying out loud. There you go. Ooh, that looks really nice. That looks really nice. Oh, I see. Another one that requires the charge beam. Ouch! Nobody told me about this! It's lava! The room is made of lava! Go screw attack yourself, pal! Heh! <laughs> Didn't even need it for that one! That one was so far away that I just... kicked its arse the old-fashioned way! This feel good if you can actually manage to do that, but... Like I said, this game is made with this in mind, so... If you rely on the old school way of doing things, you're probably not going to do very well. Damn you. Now die. Why don't you get stoned, pal? Why with the lava and the hurting? I probably should have realized. It's right next door, so of course it's going to be the same friggin' thing all over again. But I don't like to think. I'm not very good when it comes to thinking. Save complete. Have a nice day. Take this! Ha! Huh. Well. Wait. It's using that music already? Isn't that the final area music? You know, do 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 It's already using that music. Come on. Game, you can't blow your low you can't blow your stack too soon. What are you gonna use later during that actual area? You can't just use the same thing over again, can you? Whoa! Hey, back up a bit, Electrofish. You better back yourself up, Electroshock Therapy. Unless you want some shock. Right, there's another shell. Which means there's gonna be a Metroid up ahead. I know I could take it on, but I'm not sure if I have the time for that. Oh, what the heck. Nope, I really do not have enough time to take it on and actually get there, so I think I'm going to end this here. If you guys want to see me do more of this, even though, for obvious reasons, Nintendo is one of the few companies that uh, is going to do something to this video, I will do more if you guys want me to. But until then, that is it for now. Thank you so much for tuning in with me. Make sure to spread this video around like Metroids and everything else in between. And I will see you next time. Now go out there and capitalize on life. Peace out, have a good one, and have a nice and pleasant day. I said, a nice and pleasant day. See ya. If you enjoyed the content and want to stay up to date, I upload 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every single day. You can also subscribe and hit the bell icon or just check out the end screens right here.